Hi, I'm Daryl Cagle, and this is the Cagle Cast, where we're all about political cartoons. And today our topic is Trump and Taylor Swift. That's right, they're they're together, and we're going to show Trump cartoons and Taylor Swift cartoons, but that's just because nobody watches if we don't have Trump. So we've got a little bit of great Trump, and then we're going to go to Taylor Swift. And I like Taylor Swift. Political cartoonists criticize President Trump, and so does Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift is a pro-choice feminist. She supports LGBTQ rights and gun control. She voted for Biden-Harris in the last election. She's very effective in getting the vote out from her legions of Swifties. <coughs> and she's uh, all for the removal of Confederate statues in Tennessee, where these monuments to racist traitors are ubiquitous. And I like all of that. So I'm a Swifty myself for political cartoonist reasons. So today we have three brilliant political cartoonists and one columnist. Our columnist is Jace Graves. He's a nationally syndicated humor columnist who we syndicate at Kegel Cartoons. He's great. His columns run everywhere. He's won a bunch of awards and he's also a university professor and a closet Swifty with three Swifty daughters. Great to have you here, Jace. Thank you. Go Taylor Swift. Okay. Jeff Katurba, who drew this lovely Taylor Swift cartoon, is possibly our most popular cartoonist. He's drawn for over 30 years for the top newspaper in Nebraska, which shall go unnamed as cartoons have flown around the world on the space shuttle Discovery. And Jeff has been struck by lightning. It's great to have you here, Jeff. Thank you very much, Daryl. And I'm a Swifty. You're a Swifty. And this is a very nice Swifty cartoon. Tell us about this one. Well, this was inspired uh, by the Dolly Parton halftime performance. I think you just wanted yeah. to draw Dolly in her bare midriff and short. Well, I just, I think, I think Dolly is really cool, you know. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to reflect. You know, we we draw uh, cartoons about so many awful, terrible things going on in this world, and so it's nice to embrace something more upbeat and pleasant. Yeah. So that's what what inspired this one. Dolly Parton has had a huge resurgence, even among young people. All my daughters mm -hmm. are fans of Dolly. Her song Jolene shows up on TikTok videos. They know her as well as they know Taylor. Here is your most recent Trump cartoon, Jeff. You've got Trump in his golf cart and Biden on his bike being chased by indictment and polls. It's the race so far. That's great, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks. I like that. And with this cartoon, you've fulfilled your Trump obligation on this podcast. Rick McKee was the cartoonist for decades for the Augusta Chronicle in Georgia. He draws the comic Pluggers, and we've syndicated Rick for 20 years. It is great to have you here, Rick. Good to be here. <laughs> Rick, here is your Taylor Swift cartoon. You've got the media talking to Uncle Sam under a uh, avalanche, and he says, how do you feel about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift? This yeah, is very I mean, nice. uh, I'm also, uh, I wouldn't say a Swifty, but I'm a recent convert to a fan understanding, you know, the appeal of Taylor Swift. My son, Jacob, actually worked on the uh, Taylor Swift movie. He was the, the colorist on that. So, you know, I've seen the Taylor Swift movie with, with all the screaming little girls so that was fun but this particular cartoon i think this was done at the height of sort of the frenzy over the summer and it seemed like the media was completely focused on her other than a lot of these other things that were going on and i guess all those other things are more weighty they are more weighty yes they have and they have crushed uncle sam yes and here is your trump and hitler cartoon trump saying immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country and hitler says i like this guy yeah i haven't They're... really drawn hitler and hell burning in hell before so <laughs> I thought that would be a good opportunity. I am still noticing the trend that when you draw Hitler, your cartoon does not get printed. And editors just don't like Hitler. Um, cartoonists love to draw Hitler. And there's all this talk about Trump and Hitler now with all of these uh, Hitler references, vermin and blood and stuff. It makes it frustrating to be a cartoonist. It's astonishing to me, Daryl, that newspapers seem hell-bent on going in the opposite direction of what people are discussing and, and having some fear of, of all kinds of Hitler images. It's sad. Well, editors are so terrified of losing any more subscribers uh, that they have brought upon themselves, and uh, they've driven newspapers absolutely into the ground. And so they avoid weightier topics like this. It's not working. I, 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 I have to defend editors in general because I think that they're tired, and I think that they're overworked and probably underpaid. And I think they're so tired of hearing from the extremists, from yeah. the anger, they don't have the bandwidth to do it. Yeah, maybe so. Well, we get love your uh, aluminum foil. Love your aluminum foil antenna. Jeff, the reception in hell is terrible, so that's why they had to do that. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they don't get they don't get they don't get cable down there. <laughs> I thought this cartoon was wonderful, Rick. Here oh, you've sure. got uh, Trump dressed up in Dick. Tater regalia thinking it'd be ashamed to only wear this for one day. <laughs> I, I, I had a lot of fun drawing that one, I can yeah. tell you. That's fun. That's Thank just you. great visual, Rick. Just it's lovely to look at. What a beautiful drawing. Kind of has yeah. almost like a European cartoon kind of a flair to it. Oh, you know, yeah. European cartoonists draw a whole lot of generals with uh, military regalia. It's one of their things. You're the best with the bubble trump, you know, oh. and, and making him as a bubble. <laughs> well, I appreciate and that. I, I think what was the, what was the term we had last time? Boil more like a boil rather than a bubble. Like a boil on your butt. Yeah. I did a you know Google image search of dictators <laughs> and uh, you know Idi Amin and yeah. what's his name from Libya. All of them Gaddafi. had these. Gaddafi, yeah, these ridiculous outfits on with all these metal stuff. And so... Uh, Do you remember Gaddafi's, oh. his Praetorian Guard, all yes. women that were, you know, very stylishly, militarily yes. dressed? Uh, Rick, this is a, a great cartoon visually for other reasons, too, because you can see it in one image, you get the idea quickly, your brain absorbs that it has, that he has all this ridiculous regalia. But then if you want to spend a little bit more time with it and dig deep, there's all this little detail, all these little great ratings, so great. So good. He aced his cognitive exam. I don't know if you could tell that. <laughs> yeah, a cognitive exam. And tiny hands. Of course. <laughs> You can see the swastika peeking out on yeah, one right. of the one of the medals. Yeah. Okay, oh, Taylor, this is yours, and we know how you love to draw birds in all your cartoons. <laughs> Here you've got Taylor surrounded by birds. She says, "Are you my fans too?" And they're saying, "We're chimney swifts, the original Swifties." Taylor, yeah, well, that's great. <laughs> well, well, thank Very you. Nice. Later on, you'll see an earlier Taylor Swift I did from um, I must have been ten years ago. But you know, I'm not a Swiftie, but I am the only one here named Taylor. And, and Taylor Swift and I are the same height. And back when she was about 19 years old, we were pretty much the same build. But she's since, <laughs> she's since grown into being a, basically a perfect human specimen. Me, not me, you know, I'm just sort of <laughs> continuing to dwindle. Taylor, I find it hard to caricature attractive people. You know, if somebody's got a unibrow yeah. or a huge nose, but you really captured her there. And uh, it's so great. Well, thank I you. A, you know, I have a hard time doing that. I really enjoy caricaturing attractive people. The thing is, what some caricatures make the mistake in trying to find something to make an attractive person ugly. There's usually something that, that, that you can grab on uh, with an attractive person, and right. especially with an attractive female, right. and you just you just kind of exaggerate that. Well, it's one like of the, the things about attractive women is that their features are all very moderate, and nothing stands though. out in order to define them as, as pretty. I disagree with that. It's just that's there's there's a sort of a, I think a uh, kind of a notion that if you're attractive, it's for a lack of uh, flaws. And that's not really true at all. People like that are sort of boring looking. And to me, uh, Taylor Swift is pretty distinctive looking and that and that helped and um, she's got she's got very thick hair which she has those bangs which so so you know the, the space between her bangs and her eyes are, is on pace pretty much not there and uh, so things like that all so well you captured her very well well thank you taylor this cartoon is just great you got speaking <laughs> yeah. of vermin and trump with all the vermin in his hair you know he's he's saying all these hitler things right now about uh, the vermin on the border coming in to poison the blood of america it sounds just like mein kampf well, one of the great things that we've all done this is that Trump's hair allows us to do so many things with it. Yeah. You know, so just the idea, I had the rat's nest idea in mind basically as soon as I heard when he first started using th that particular terminology. But Trump's hair has been uh, a wonderful gift for all of us. Yeah, that is fantastic. A lot of cartoonists would have made the mistake of writing off to the side rat's nest, you know, and you don't you don't have to do that because you can look I don't, at it. I don't think you needed to have speaking of vermin in it. Probably not. I, I, if you want, you know, I could... Uh, you could, I could unpost it and take that off and post it again. <laughs> <laughs> I hear what you're saying, Daryl. I kind of think you do need it, though, just because it, for some of the readers who just need that little teeny bitty nudge reminder. That's true. There's a lot of people who are not as connected with the news. Well, also, and, and not here I'm suddenly turning around saying leave it on, but vermin is not a word that you, when Trump started using that word, it's not used right. that much anymore. You know, pests. And of course, we refer to rats or cockroaches, but uh, uh, calling them vermin. And of course, there's there's obvious political connotations 
to the word vermin dating centuries back. So Lady used it. Right. It's a powerful loaded word. So yeah, it's so well I'll leave it in there. I agree. It is lost <laughs> on a lot of people. A lot of my students wouldn't know what vermin meant. It's also curious how many politicians use the word existential. Something's an existential threat and many, many people I would guess have no idea what they mean when they say that. I should have added that uh, Taylor Jones draws for the Hoover Digest at Stanford University. He was a staff cartoonist for many years for the El Nuevo Dia newspaper well, in Puerto Rico. Sort of, sort of. And he Sort of. And you drew for many years for U.S. News and World Report magazine. And we love you, Taylor. So here we are on the cartoons about Taylor Swift drawn by all of our other cartoonist friends. And this one is by John Darko. He's got the two AI computers. And the one says, we'll let them have this one. The other one says, but it'll be the last. That was the Time Magazine Person of the Year. I guess that's going to be the last uh, person who's a Person of the Year in Time Magazine. <laughs> I, I um, love his style. I love his little robots. They're just so great. Yeah, Don, Don, John Darko, even though this is a very simple sketch for him, his pencil stuff is always just beautiful. I think there was a debate this year whether AI was really the top story and Time Magazine went with uh, Taylor Swift because, frankly, it's going to sell more magazines. That's right. And I, I get that, but uh, I'm okay with that because I like Taylor Swift. And That'll I don't change. like I don't like AI. <laughs> I thought you liked AI. AI. Uh, me? Yeah. No, I th it's putting uh, my illustrator friends out of work. It's, oh, uh, I thought you were okay with it. In the last conversations we've had, I thought you were... Well, you know, we had in our last podcast, we talked to Dutch cartoonist Bart van Leeuwen, who uses right. AI in his cartoons to draw all the I ancillary little, characters in the backgrounds. You you hadn't figured that 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 I was had a surprise. Not that. that was a surprise to me. Yeah, it's interesting how uh, extensively he uses it. Uh, he'll he'll draw the the head of a politician and let the AI do the rest of his body. Daryl, don't you it, think that don't don't you think that at some point, maybe not too far. Suddenly, all these AI images will, in fact, be entirely accepted. And you might well have a beautiful AI performer who uh, does appear uh, as time, whatever of the year. Easily. It's gonna easily. Happen. Well, I think the line for us is that I don't think people are going to want to hear political opinions that come from AI. I think they probably don't mind the drawings. You know, Bart's drawings are just about all AI, and, and we're fine with that. But I don't think we want to know a computer's opinion about things. So well, in that respect, maybe we're a little bit safe compared that, to the other artists. Some news uh, outlets are using AI to help generate news stories. Yeah, sports, I mean, high school sports stories, things like that. I'm not saying that that's right. Uh, yeah, Sports Illustrated magazine, just all AI. That's crazy. Uh, Daryl, uh, Rick's predecessor at the Augusta Chronicle, Clyde Wells, he and I were out for lunch. I, was, I lived in uh, Augusta for a time before Rick was there, or at least I didn't know him. And Clyde and I went out to lunch a couple of times. And one time we were spending the whole time, this was in the 1990s, maybe 1993, 1994, and we were talking about computers, and Clyde was saying, computers will never be smarter than the people who have to program them. And I said, it's just a matter of time, Clyde, that science fiction writers are right. And I think it's just a matter of time when AI will displace us all. Yeah. Or it's a matter of Time magazine. Well, I would say uh, don't take your uh, technological information from Clyde Wells. <laughs> 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 I, I knew Clyde very well, and uh, I, I had to I had to do some of his computer work for him. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I still work so, entirely by hand. So so here we have Joe Heller, and he's drawn AI as well. Drat! Someone beat us to world domination. When he's looking at Taylor Swift on Time Magazine cover, people had this in I mind. This. I guess it, I guess AI was a, a strong second to Taylor Swift. Cartoon. Well, I mean, like Great. you said, I, it, AI AI should have been the number one story. It should be the thing that we're all talking about. As a college instructor, we are really struggling with AI and and trying to figure out how to teach students to use AI because we assume they will be using it when they get into the professional world, but also not to cheat with it. And mm -hmm. it's a fine line, but it's a huge topic in higher education, as all of you can probably imagine. Well, here we have Dave Womond, and Dave Womond has drawn Taylor Swift named Time Magazine's Person of the Year, also NFL MVP, uh, as she's <laughs> holding her big NFL trophy. It's I gather that on the sports channels, 
uh, whenever there's a football game, the top g- goes to uh, Taylor Swift sitting in the stands watching the football game. Oh, yes. And I follow Sports Center on Instagram, and all they post, ESPN Sports Center, well, not all they post, but for a while there, it was just relentless Taylor Swift stuff. And, you know, the sports people who follow that are like, okay, enough, please. I was just going to say, I think the Chiefs and the NFL owe a great debt to Taylor Swift right now. Think right. of all of the new fans that she's created, all the people that are watching that would never have watched before just to see if they could get a glimpse at her. Yeah, but well, and you think that's going to happen with our podcast today? There's, yeah. a, there's a, uh, a shop in Kansas City, a little boutique, a really cool t-shirt shop I've been to, and a quiet little neighborhood, and they got all of this merch in Taylor's hands, and this shop is blowing up. Forbes has written about them now. It's incredible just what she's done for this one little t-shirt shop in Kansas City. I also, I love this drawing. I love the elongated neck. And even though, Taylor, I love your drawing of Taylor. It's a totally different take. Dave's take is different, but they're both great in their own way. And it's a great, to me, it's a great example of how you can have two different artists take on a face. It looks like them, but it's so different. It's great. Laman has given her kind of a a Modigliani look. Yeah. (laughs) I'm really I really, I really like what he's done with the, the um, fabric and the shirt, the folds and the lights yes. and the dark and all that sort of stuff. Yep. When, you know, Kelsey messes up and she decides to break up with him and write about him in a song, then, uh, you know, she's It'll be gonna, song of the year. She's going to unleash all hell of her Swifties on the Kansas City Chiefs and uh, <laughs> and all of that will go away. They're getting married. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with it. They're getting married. Okay. Well, you know, all they right. seem like. I mean, for what it's worth, they seem like. Uh, they. They. Um, he's an. He's an entertaining fellow. Um, you know, Mr. Kelsey. And, he's in every uh, commercial. On yeah, TV. and so I don't know. Maybe they. Maybe they found the perfect match. You know, at least by Hollywood. Standard. I think she's 34, maybe. And Correct. I think she may be ready to start thinking kids and marriage and the whole deal. <laughs> we do talk about Taylor Swift like we are old men talking about Taylor she Swift. Needs to be, she needs to be in the kitchen barefoot. <laughs> You know, <laughs> making him a sandwich. I'm just think, gonna, of, think of your audience, Daryl. Can you Yay. imagine Travis Kelsey telling her to go make him a sandwich? Pass so a, here's uh, Times a Person of the Year from Bob Englehart. He writes, guess who? And he draws only her smile. Her smile is distinctive, but this yep. is also one of those I got away without having to draw caricature cartoons. <laughs> so I think, I think, I think Bob works. probably had the same issue I have with drawing attractive people. So he said, I'm going to draw a smile. But they all catch the teeth. The teeth. That's clever. Give it away. It's, you can tell it's her smile. Her her teeth are distinctive and cute. Usually, you think teeth should just be uh, not noticeable. The uh, thing about Taylor Swift is that she <laughs> she's beautiful, of course. But to me, she's like someone you might know, a really beautiful mm-hmm. person you might know. She's not impossibly perfect, and she knows that. I watched the Miss Americana documentary on Netflix and she's aware of her imperfections and she's very real. I think that's one thing that draws people to her. This is just a great cartoon right here. I, I love this was it. from Pat Bagley with uh, Travis Kelsey about to pour the Gatorade on Taylor Swift who has mm-hmm. just it's won the person of the year. That's awesome. And you know it's the and the thing about it is that a, lot, that a lot of people don't understand it's funnier that he didn't draw dumping the Gatorade on her that he left that for the imagination of the mm-hmm. reader to <laughs> that- interpret sort of that kinetic moment when he does that. Yep. Are you imagining that right now, Rick? I am. I am. I just, I love the drawing of Kelsey. I mean, the, those arms, by the, the legs, the movement. Pat just has this looseness yeah. to his drawings, but yet there's so much form there. Just from, you know, great idea, visually, just wonderful drawing. And the love language is cute too, because they're both speaking in their own language by what they're doing here. You're 100% so- right, Daryl. That's, yep, that's great. Here we have John Darko again and Kelsey and Taylor walking away from us with the backs of their heads. And I I love cartoons that caricature people from the backs of their heads. And it says, remember Chiefs Nation, Taylor is an Eagles fan. And she thinks it's a trap. This one, I guess, is so in the weeds that I don't really get it. Maybe she's an Eagles fan. You know what's going on here? You know, I'm not a pro football fan, so I, I thought maybe it was uh, local for uh, Darko. In Darko's in Missouri. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I thought from that, Pennsylvania. That's right. I thought, yeah, so I get Eagles fan. Either you know, uh, I thought she was from Tennessee. Fan. 
I think she, she lives, lives in Tennessee. Tennessee. But she's from Pennsylvania. Yes, that's right. Yeah. The documentary I watched, she indicated that she was <laughs> from Pennsylvania. But the, this cartoon, to me, they look a little older than they are. They almost look middle aged in this. I agree. From yeah, the back. I do. yeah, I that's think so too. Cute. Like they're a married couple. My daughter lives in Nashville now, and I've gone to visit her a couple times. And it's the funniest thing. This was a couple of years ago before she's she was big, but she had not blown up like she has now. And I was at the Country Music Hall of Fame, and they have the Taylor Swift Education Center in the Country Music Hall of Fame. And I thought that that's is awesome. That's like is the, that an oxymoron. It's like the Ben Stiller <laughs> School for Kids Who Don't Read Good or whatever that was. I thought. But I guess they learned uh, songwriting in that thing. I guess she teaches to like underprivileged kids, which is fun and a good thing. I really shouldn't joke about education and Taylor Swift because she writes all her stuff. She's a genius as far as her <laughs> musical does. abilities and her songwriting abilities. Yeah, she really I, I guess I didn't realize she wrote everything until I watched that documentary, but pretty amazing. And she works she's really such a pro- hard. She's such a proponent for creativity and the creative process and what she has done to fight back against the recording industry. For me, even if I don't listen to all of her music, I, you know, I'm not going to be playing her music necessarily. If I hear it, I, I like it. I enjoy it. But I'm a Swifty in the way that she's so outspoken against the big guys. And as cartoonists, as artists, I've certainly had my struggles fighting to keep my rights, my publishing rights, and so on. I really respect and appreciate what she has done speaking out on behalf of creatives. I really didn't listen to her music at all until about three years ago. And you know, my girls were teenagers and they would have friends over in the backyard in the pool and they would be playing music and you know occasionally I would have to go out or I would hear it inside and I would hear this music and I I asked my daughter who is this and she said oh dad that's Taylor Swift and I said really this is good so I got on Spotify and I started listening and I really like most of her songs and this year um, at the end of the year I don't know if any of you are on Spotify but they come out with sort of your year in review on Spotify and they tell you who you listen to the most and Taylor Swift was my number two uh, artist that I listened to (laughs) Well, now we want to know who number one was. Yeah, Uh, Ben Rector was my number one. I love Ben Rector. So here we have Joe Heller, and it's the new daddy-daughter time as Taylor Swift's on at the Chiefs game. Dad loves football, and daughter loves Taylor Swift, and they both think, please just don't ask me to explain it to you. Um, (laughs) I guess this is is how Taylor Swift crosses over into the old men. Are are any of you guys football fans? Oh, yeah. I was a college football fan. (laughs) I I actually detest football. Oh, okay. I was a very scrawny kid, and when we would like neighborhood pick up, they were like touch football games. They never treated me as something to touch. I was to be tackled to the ground, you know, by great big kids in the neighborhood. <laughs> to me, football's been a game that's been kind of uh, a bully's game. But, uh, you know, I'm not saying that Travis Kelsey's a bully. Well, I've fans. always been a Chiefs fan because we're uh, in Omaha. We're just a couple of hours away from Kansas City. So that has always been our adopted hometown uh, team. But speaking of fans, though, I mean, one of the things that I really appreciate about Taylor Swift that while I, I don't listen to a lot of her music, I certainly respect her as a person is how she treats her fans and uh, she gives them everything she's got. And if there's somebody in trouble at the concert or whatever, I mean, she pretty much stops everything and she really reaches out literally and figuratively to her fans. I think that's just great. The way she obviously is a a nice, kind person who appreciates the fact that they've put her where she is. So Jeff, here is one of yours and it's kind of wordy. You want to read it to us? Yeah, it's uh, the girl saying, what if Taylor Swift and, and Travis Kelsey get married? She runs for president and wins and he becomes first gentleman. And the mom is just saying, well, first, nothing would surprise me anymore, uh, which is how I feel about everything in this world. And second, that actually sounds nice. And this is just another example. I, again, I draw so many cartoons about really heavy, heavy, dark, awful stuff. And I just feel like as a cartoonist, I want to mix it up. I think that readers like to have it mixed up a little bit. You can't just have it serious, serious, serious all the time. And I think that that draws readers in to then maybe pay a little bit more attention to when you do heavy, dark cartoons. So I'm all 
always looking for an opportunity to do something uplifting and positive. And, you know, from this podcast, you might think, well, that's all I do, do, but that isn't the case. And I also like to just sometimes take a step back where, you know, from just drawing a politician or a newsmaker, take a step back and draw a cartoon about where people live, people who are doing what people are doing when they're maybe reading a cartoon or hanging out. And so, you know, I just want to take a step back and capture just a little slice of life for just a, just a moment. Just give people a little breath before we move on to all the crap. I agree, <laughs> Jeff. I would say two thirds of the fan mail I get for my columns refer to the fact that it's so refreshing to read something that's not politics or it's not so dark. It's so refreshing to be able to read something to laugh at or to make mm-hmm. me feel good. So I think people do appreciate that. This one is from Steve Neese in Canada. And you've got the two Swifty daughters swinging their uh, Kansas City Chiefs pennants. And dad says, since when are they Kansas City Chiefs fans? And mom says, since they might catch a glimpse of Taylor Swift. You notice they're wearing a 1989 jersey. So there's a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, the, the jersey is great? Well, yeah, 1989. Yeah. Reference that's to a, her her album. Her album. album yeah. Oh, I Brilliant. see. Very yeah. good. That's clever. That's great. The first one was born in 19, and the second one is uh, Taylor Swift, born in 89. Very clever. All right. Here is uh, Rivers drawing an old man throwing the dog a bone in the style of the Kansas City Chiefs. And it says, to all those folks who might not be a rich and famous power couple like Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, but act like they are. This is kind of like a Jerry Von Amaragat in the neighborhood cartoon, Mm -hmm. I guess. I, I love his dog. I love the figure. Although I suppose he could have made it 89 on his jersey. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Rivers will soon draw a Biden cartoon with 89 on him for his age or something like that. <laughs> okay, so here we have another Dave Wobbin cartoon, and it's the guy at the spaceship with the aliens. And the guy says, are you here to share your secrets and help us solve all the crises facing humankind, like how to survive climate change? And the aliens say... No, we're here to ask, with all the crises facing humankind, why are you all focused on Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey? <laughs> nice alien voice, Daryl. Oh, great. thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I think this one probably goes back to probably around the time that I did mine, where it seemed like there was a lot of terrible things going on, and that was, you know, even Saturday Night Live did a skit on it, just sort of a nonstop Taylor Swift coverage. Here we have Adam Ziglis and Swifty with all of her fans, including the NFL executives who are thinking <laughs> dollars. That's great. Good cartoon. Yeah, that's a good Taylor Swift, too. Yep, it is. Yep. You know, there have been several news articles that have talked about how much she's done for the economy in general with her tour. Yeah, the I'm, yeah. Tour. I got to thinking that, you know, the next uh, economic downturn, when it finally happens, might be called the, the Taylor recession, you know. That's right. This one is from Gattis Sluka in <laughs> Latvia, and he's got Zelensky in Ukraine talking to the, the room, I guess, full of legislators who are all looking at the iPad and watching Taylor Swift. That's great. Boy, Zelensky, oh, great. this is, you know, this is as much about uh, Zelensky not interesting us so much as it is Taylor interesting yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, both. Great, great cartoon. And great Thank use you. of Gattis does such a great job with no or few words and his use of color here. You're, yeah, you're focused excellent. on the screen. Both screens, everything else is grayed out. Really brilliant. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that about Very the good. color. And, and I probably would not have had the restraint to do that, um, mm-hmm. what he did there. Because, I, you know, I tend to like, oh, everything's got to be in color, you know. So let me just color every single person in this crowd. I hate Well, Rick, I have a question for you. As a cartoonist who, like uh, all of us, we started out in black and white in newspapers. And when color became available, I, I know I kind of went nuts with it for a while. And then after a while, I had it, as you said, I had to try to show some restraint because just because I have it available doesn't mean I get to use it all the when, time. But when I, uh, a lot of the work I did for the newspaper in Puerto Rico was under sort of ridiculous deadline pressure, in part because I had to sort of translate stuff from English to Spanish, etc. But they wanted them in color, and I wanted to do them in color. But a lot of them, I only did them in partial color, other than grayscale. And I think some of that just turned out the, the, the best. It, it does have a way of directing you to the points you want to make, you know, visually. Yeah, I Taylor, did that affect your uh, idea process, having to work so quickly on a deadline? Sorry to interrupt. But did, did it, do you find that when you have more time that maybe you kind of wish you had a limited deadline? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I get pretty lazy if there's too much time. You know, I'd be sweating bullets if you were trying 
trying to make that really tight deadline, you'd really feel sort of spent, but also really good. You know, you'd feel like, oh, just sort of, ah, this wonderful after it was done, as well as being exhausted. But at the same time, yeah, if I have enough time, I, I immediately start procrastinating. It almost seems to, I mean, it's laziness, but it almost seems it forces me to apply pressure later. How about yourself? I, I initially resisted doing color, and uh, I, I thought it, did, it took away from the seriousness of the cartoons and, you know, all the cartoonists that I admired and respected, like McNelly and Oliphant, Jim Boardman and Don Wright, and all these guys, they didn't use color. They didn't have to have color, and they certainly didn't have to have color in their daily deadline. And, you know, later I just embraced it, and you just have to figure out how to get it done. Well, didn't Oliphant uh, avoided it for uh, the longest time? It maybe he still does. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's drawing anymore. But he's not <laughs> Yeah, he's not drawing right now. Okay, but I mean, but I mean, he just—he wasn't interested in that. No, he never did color. Well, he did did colors. You have a you have an elephant book in your bookshelf there, Rick, and he certainly watercolored the cover of that. Covers the covers. Oh, he he did do the cover. Yeah, not the end. (laughs) And in fact, if I'm not uh, uh, well, this is too much professional talk, I suppose. But if I remember, I must have read or listened to some interview with him, and he decided sometime I think the 1980s to even you you know like so many cartoonists then they would use that board that you, you you brush it and then have the gray scale. Duo shade. And, oh, duo shade. And he just decided everything's going to be strictly pen and ink, no, nothing like that. Um, well, it's interesting, Taylor, because I recently in, I was in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia, for the Democracy 360 conference, and they gave us a special tour behind the scenes of the elephant collection, which he's donated oh. to the university, and they pulled out several of his... I, I grew up loving his work, a huge inspiration. Never actually got to see any of his work in person. And he had they had some of the early duo shade cartoons, as many of us have used, and all of that duo shade faded. And then yeah. you could see where he just went with, like you just said, black and white pen and ink. Yep. So Taylor, here you have yourself with Taylor Swift and uh, <laughs> you're writing, uh, you know, actually we should use your voice for okay. this one, Taylor. You know, I read the other day that 73% of Taylors are morbidly underweight. And then That's Taylor's great. saying, suckiest party ever. Or she's texting that <laughs> to a friend. And, and, I, and uh, I don't remember her being skinny. Oh, yes, yeah, she um, was very slender. I thought she had always looked good. Well, this is like... Wait, she wait, was wait, like... wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't, you, just because she was slender doesn't mean she didn't look good. But the point is, she, she was slender enough that I could exaggerate that for the sake of the caricature. Because she she, she's one of the 27% that is not or morbidly no, she, she No, she is. A, I'm the one who's in trouble, comes to wait. But she used to be an ectomorph. She is now a mesomorph. Me? She she did, and she was aware of that. I keep going back to this documentary I watched, but she does talk about how she went through an eating disorder period where she was really worried about the way she looked, her body shape. She wasn't eating, and then she had this revelation that normal well. people eat. So here's Jimmy Margulies, and he's got the news on. The guy in the news says, Putin withdraws from Ukraine. If Republicans give up the fight against Obamacare, and Iran renounces nuclear program. Yeah, the guy watching TV sees Apple bows to stars <laughs> demand, and he says, Taylor Swift sure had a busy day. I'm impressed with her standing up to these big behemoth companies. And, uh, you know, Apple bowed to her demand to get paid for their three-month free subscriptions they were giving out. They did that the next day, and they did it for all of the artists. I, I think that's great. You know, Daryl, I think that Biden could improve his standing in the polls in economics if he were to name Taylor Swift to his Council of Economic Advisors. And, and, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, that, I'm not really being facetious. I, I think you should actually, make her his running mate. Well, that's that's even better. <laughs> yeah, she's old. She'll be old enough next year. One of the things that's kept her going is that she is re-releasing all of her previous recordings as Taylor's versions because she lost I I don't understand all the ins and outs of it but it the, the story goes like she lost the rights somehow to her previous recording. So she's re-recording. The, ma- the Masters. The Masters. Record. Right. Yep. And re-releasing the albums as in all the, the kids my girl's age are eagerly anticipating the next Taylor's version album, which was already released several years ago. Because usually she And these songs in. all sound exactly the same as the originals. <laughs> and they're selling better than they did when they were out the first time. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. And then she's sticking it to that guy who was keeping all of her old stuff and I'm just very impressed with all that. And she usually throws in a couple of new songs I believe on some of those. Mm. Here's another Jimmy Margulies cartoon. You've got Taylor Swift getting a big platinum record from the Big Machine Records who says, you've got platinum again. You sold millions on registering to vote. Which she Uh, did. She really got her Swifties to go register to vote and of course they were voting much more in the right way than than the Trump 
Trumpy way, and I think that's great. That's a cartoon from what five years ago, I think. Wow, yep. 2018, yeah. it says. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How about that? She had different hair. Yes, she did. That was when she was promoting them to go vote against Marsha Blackburn. Is it in Tennessee? Oh, was the it? Senator? Interesting. Taylor said she's Trump in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here you have the Republicans saying, "Stop being political," and Taylor Swift says, "Voters gonna vote." That's great. Which is, you know, play on her song. Haters are gonna hate, 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 whatever, whatever it goes. Well, here's a great, this is a great caricature of, of uh, Taylor Swift. This is actually our last cartoon. This one's by Pat Bagley. And he asks, why is a celebrity couple making some people lose their tiny minds? <laughs> and the MAGA far-right Christian says, it's the devil! And it's voting rights number one, two, gay beer, and three, COVID immunization. As she holds up the get out the vote sign with Travis Kelsey. That kind of just puts it all into the same picture. This is a perfect mm -hmm caricature of, of uh, Taylor Swift. It's gotten her three main things you think about her face, all there very simply. The eyes, the bangs, and the lip. That's a good Kelsey, too. You don't, you don't see a whole lot of him. They managed to do it without her teeth. Yeah. I think we're seeing more Kelsey than any other football player right now. Yeah. You might have to go back to Joe Namath to have a, a football player who was in, you know, who would have found his way into editorial cartoons. Uh, I Well, I don't know about Brady. Maybe Brady. We see uh, sure, football Brady. cartoons as local cartoons and you don't see them reprint or in syndication much, of course, because they're about a local team. Adam Ziegler draws Buffalo Bills cartoons. But they're, you know, they've disappeared largely as local cartoonists are no longer drawing at newspapers. It used to be the only papers that had cartoonist jobs were the ones that were big urban papers, and those are the places that had football teams. And so there were lots of sports cartoons. And then sports cartoons just died along with the rest of the cartooning profession. And Ironically, I got my start at the Kansas City Star as a sports cartoonist. Really? Wow. Well, you yeah. know that I'm the oldest one here, and uh, although Daryl will remember this too, I don't know, uh, but Jeff, maybe this was true when you were working at the Kansas City Star, but big, like, whole page sports cartoons were a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, 50, 60 years ago. I used yeah, to live in New York with the uh, Daily News had a big. <laughs> maybe it'll oh, come Oh, yeah. Back. My, Bill my Gallo dog. in the Daily News, he yeah. had a great big uh, yep, page Gallo. every day. I'm still holding out hope that all this will come back. My daughter, my oldest daughter, asked for a record player for <laughs> Christmas. So, <laughs> you know, if records can come back, maybe newspapers and sporting cartoons and all those wonderful things can come back. I just heard the other day that CDs are coming back. Really? I still have a CD player. Okay, gentlemen, do you have any last words about Taylor Swift? We are at our last cartoon. I need tickets to the <laughs> New Orleans concert in October. So if any donors out there want to throw some my way, this is what Ticketmaster does now. You can't get the tickets, so they put you on a waiting list that is endless and has no hope of ever getting to your name. Well, awesome. no, well you know, it is, it's very rare that editorial cartoonists draw favorable cartoons or cartoons about things they like because we have a negative art form. And so this is probably a crazy podcast of something that's not very editorial cartoon like for us to well, like Taylor Swift. You know, mostly like if you like stuff, it isn't funny, you know? And Taylor appears in my latest column, so be sure and read the one that <laughs> just came out. It's called Haunted by the Kids of Christmas Past, so... Well, everybody, thank you for being with us today. This concludes our King Cast. Remember to subscribe. We appreciate it, and we will see you next time, and we will talk about things we don't like. See you later, gentlemen. Fantastic. See you thank later. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Merry Christmas, everybody. Same here. Merry Christmas, guys. Nice to talk to you. Good to chat. Happy Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever you do. <laughs>